a large Bovernet system I'm making into a large bonsai or it could end up as a large garden tree. So these have been grown at Herons for the last 36 years but the trees I reckon are about 50 or 60 years old because I purchased them in 1980 from Holland. I bought about 50 of these trees and subsequently I bought even more. So these are all destined to become big bonsai like this. But let me take you to the field and show you the rest of the Bovernetses. So come with me. So let me show you the field where we grow our Bovernetses. So these are all the large Bovernetses that we have. And as you can see, some of them are about eight foot tall. So these have been grown for the last 36 years at Aaron's. Some of the trees which have not been potted up have become big trees. They are also grown for 36 years. I'll show you some more. So all these big Bovernetses have got massive trunks. And I know that not all of these can be made into bonsai, but some of them have got potential for being bonsai. I'll show another large one that we made <coughs> back in the early 80s. And that is already a bonsai, but I've grown it in a big pot to strengthen the tree. So this one is going to go back into a large bonsai pot. It's got lovely shari here with a big branch and this is going to be refined so this is going to be a large bonsai. Okay so look at it. Look at the size of the trunk. Detail. Okay now if you spin the camera around we have a whole field of them and there must be about over 200 movements here. Look at them. Oh and this is San Jose juniper. Look at some of these big trees. Look at the side of its trunk. Okay. And there are more. If you look at it, one of these days, I will take you for a tour and show you some of these trees. Look at that massive trunk. We can make it into a bonsai about this high. Discard the top and then we could start all over again. But the purpose of coming here is to show you the different trees we have and all of them have enormous potential. Look at that one. Look at that one. Look at the top of that one. Wow. We've just had a heavy shower of rain and I'm dying to come out to work. So these will end up as big trees, but nevertheless, they have got beautiful trunks. And so it carries on. There is just tree after tree after tree. So, as I say, I don't collect trees, but these trees have been grown here. And they have all got enormous potential for bonsai. Look at them. Every single tree has potential for bonsai. And these are all buvernenses. All buvernenses. All in different stages of training. So we've selected one tree from here and I'm going to show you what we do with them. Some of them, okay, they may look a bit, you know, uncared for, but they all have potential. So let's go back into the greenhouse and I will show you what we're going to do with one that I selected from here. So here we are. This is a Bougainensis. This is by no means a big one. The trunk is only like three or four inches in diameter. And if you come close, you look at this craggy bark. This only comes with age. These old trees with bark like that come with age. And this is a natural distressing, which gives character to the trunk. And it's almost got a twist in it. I can show you what I did over the last 36 years. I pruned some of these major branches off. So that has been pruned off there. And over here, I pruned the lead out there. I pruned some of these other branches. So it's had some very rough pruning, but by no means uh, I have pruned the entire tree. So with trees like this, the natural tendency is to make a big bonsai with large spreading branches like this. So you have a large spreading one meter wide bonsai and about 1.2, 1.4 meter tall bonsai. But I'm trying to see if I can do something different to this tree. So let's look at this tree first and analyze it. 
So if you analyze it, if we come close and look, we always look to see what the nebari and the trunk line at the base looks like. And that distress, which is like a natural shari, makes the trunk look quite interesting. And the way the trunk twists, there's like a twist there. These are all these little branches which have died off. So if I turn the tree around, and let me see what is the most promising side. That other side still looks more promising than this side. Uh, so we keep turning it and seeing what we can do. So as I said, the choice is to make it either as a very large spreading bonsai with branches like this, conical shape, very rough wiring, and you get a nice large tree with uh, wide spreading branches. So I had thought of using probably this as the front. And when I say I've chosen the front, it doesn't follow that I will stick rigidly to that. Let me turn it. Hold it. I found that simply by tilting the tree, you see a different perspective. So that's all part of keeping an open mind. So tilting the tree, I've already given a slightly different perspective. So that line is quite nice using this as the front, but this is looking at it as a large tree. But what if I use small branches? I want it to look like a big tree. So if you don't have small branches to compare with the thick trunk, then the tree doesn't look that big or that impressive. If you have short, small branches, then it makes the trunk look more impressive. I think I've taught this principle quite often in my YouTube videos. Now, this was really the back of the tree, but I'm turning it around and I begin to see that this side has got some potential. So perhaps I shouldn't discount using this as the front. When you make bonsai, it's always very tempting to have image fixed in your mind and you can't get out of that fixed image. That can be very dangerous. So these are the short branches. I don't want to make a big tree. So I'm trying to see how I can make this a more interesting tree with short branches. So have a close look at the tree while I bring my tools. I still haven't decided on the front or the back. This looks very interesting, but if I want to make a tree with short branches, with this as the front, the obvious solution is to make a big tree with wide spreading branches, like so. And that may not be what I want. So if I keep turning the tree around and see what are the possibilities. tilted it at all. Let me just get rid of some of the obviously dead twigs. Pity I don't have more branches like this. That's ideally what I want.
See, this is so nice that I keep coming back to this side, but I don't get such a good view of the movement of the line if I use this side. Do you want me to get a big terracotta pot? No, no. Let's see. If I put it like this, it might look better. Okay, we will prop the tree up in a different angle. Let's so we've got it out of the black flower pot. I'm now trying to see if there are any surface roots that I can exploit. The only problem with growing in these flower pots for too long is that the roots go round and round and you store up all sorts of problems for yourself. Here's a little holly seedling I will save. I never waste anything. See, the, truth, the roots have started going round and round. What a shame. I like the way the tree leans, so the possibilities are that if you wanted a short tree, you would cut that off, make that the leader and make that the tree. You could get quite an interesting tree like that, but I think the transition is a bit too severe. I think I will stick to this line, go here and go here and get that line. These will become branches, these will be branches. So I will do that and just bring my big loppers. I'm just going to shave some of these off. So the aim is to try and use thin branches to make it a very compact looking tree. So if I'm going to make it a compact looking tree, I'm going to have to take some very drastic decisions. Very, very drastic. I hope I don't make mistake. Because sometimes I, I fear that it's so easy to make a mistake. So if I'm going to make something like that. Before I cut branches off, I'm going to try something. I will try the wire and see what it looks like before I go too crazy. <laughs> so. Mind you, I haven't tried this before, it's just what we call off the hoof, extempo. I've got to remind myself that Bouvernensis branches are brittle, so for God's sake, I hope I don't break any branch. Sometimes people wrap a lot of raffia around to prevent it breaking, but I'm usually fairly confident that if you take care, it may not be absolutely necessary to wrap raffia. Raffia does help, there's no doubt about that. But I may not need to do that.
I'm putting a double coil of wire because for some reason a double coil can be more effective than a single coil rather than use a very thick single a double of a slightly thinner gauge often works better I keep reminding you that with pines they swell very fast in the summer so if you don't want the wire to bite into the trunk, you've got to really keep a close eye throughout the growing season. holding it with two hands when I bend so I want the branch as close to the trunk as close as possible I wanted a tight tree very tight tree all these long branches I probably don't think I need so I will just leave a little stub in case I want to make gin there goes timber <laughs> less is more I have less to worry about so I want a, a compact looking tree, really compact looking tree. That branch looks a lot stronger now. that because I haven't completed it. Now this one I want to bring down. Again I'm going to use a double coil rather than a single. It's very simple wiring. I don't think we need to be in film. Someone wired this. When I wired it, I will show you what I'm going to do with it. Okay, I put a double coil of wire there, and now I'm trying to see what effect I can get from this.
maybe to do a guy wire. Let me just do a temporary guy, just to see how it looks. I don't like using guy wires, but if needs must, I will use it. Temporary guy. If I do a guy, I've got to protect it with rubber or something so it doesn't mark. So, this is the sort of image of the branch I want. It's coming down like that and like that. Oh my god, Peter. You think it looks. It was brilliant. Huh? It was really good. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth waiting, isn't it? These have been here on the nursery 36 years. And today. meanwhile, they become thicker, older. And this is the time. There's a time and place for everything. Sometimes you can't hurry things. When they happen, they will happen. Now, today was the first day in 2022 that we opened to the public, and I was rushed off my feet because all the staff were on holiday. So now it's half past five, and I have first chance to do some work on the trees. And virtually every person who turned up on the nursery today was a YouTube fan. I didn't want to take pictures of every single person. It would be too boring for all of you, but suffice it to say, I was very grateful to meet them. They're such lovely people. I had one guy come from Coventry. And that person, if you're listening, his wife said that all she ever listens, gets the sound of in the home is the sound of my voice. <laughs> But she said it was better than listening to the voice of his other YouTube uh, passion, which was about fast cars or something. And that guy had a more boring voice. I'm really flattered because I thought I have a very boring voice. So obviously some people don't think my voice is boring. <laughs> How nice is that? So these are the pads. I will look through the camera lens in a minute. I find that from time to time, if you step back and just take a still photo, the still photos give you a different perspective and it reveals the faults and all these shortcomings much better than the human eye can do. The only trouble with the camera is that it's two dimensional. When you look at it in real life and in real time, the perspective is different. Try that for yourself. When you're creating a bonsai from time to time, step back, take a still photograph or look through the camera lens. It will tell you a lot. And my favorite camera, I'm not being paid by Apple, is the humble iPhone, not humble, sophisticated iPhone.
not sure about that. I will decide on that later. So I managed to bring that down. Got to decide on these. And those long branches at the back. those. So I don't want to take hasty decision to cut because this is a situation where I might regret it. So we've got so far and I'm going to do more wiring but I noticed that a stub here where I pruned this tree to get a new line. See this was cut and grow method. What I've been doing all along for all these past 36 years, they're doing cut and grow. You can see where I cut this here, and this grew this way. I cut this there, instead of going straight up, it went that way. I cut there, and then it grows this way. So these are all cut and grow principles. But now that little stump, anyone else would want to make a gin out of it, but I don't want to make gins everywhere. A longer one, I might make gin, but if it is not appropriate, I'll just get rid of it. So let's get rid of that little stump it's not doing anything but i want to do some clean wiring so i might even need to saw it off so or i might try the lopper But this little one I will probably keep for a gin, I will see. If I don't like it, I can always remove it. I'm removing this because I'm going to do some wiring and it's coming in the way of the wiring. So let's get rid of that. This is a branch splitter. I shouldn't be using it for this purpose, <laughs> but I can't find my root cutter. Should really make a concave cut so that it heals better. At least the pine wood is not as hard as juniper wood. Okay, so I'm going to wire these two. So I've been using 4 millimeter wire most of the time. found that by putting a double four I get really effective bending. I could have used a five or six but two fours is better than a thick five or six. Take this up to here. Cameraman, by the way, is Josh. I'm going to split that trunk just for the heck of it. No, not just for the heck of it, because it may make the bending slightly simpler. So 
So this is the true use of the branch splitter. Those of you who are getting more uh, into bonsai, you'll find that the branch splitter is a very, very useful tool to have. I'm not trying to sell you uh, a tool, but branch splitter does make bending of very thick branches much, much easier. You've seen me use it a lot. do a crisscross that means cross cut at right angles to each other so it can bend in two planes not just one plane but two planes at 90 degrees to each other Just wiring when I come to bending it I'll show it again. So let me show you today is the third of January so this is the third day no that's just the second day we've worked about maybe two hours on this tree yesterday in the evening and uh, we've got that far and now the early morning of the third I'm working uh, to complete the tree so I reckon this tree would have been finished in three hours. So I show you the detail of the wiring. You notice that I've used double wire rather than the single strand to bring the branch down and I'm putting an anchor there. And some of this wiring is going to be completed so that we get the pad. These have to be wired. Let's look at this side. You can see we've done this and we are creating the crown now. And this also I put a double using this thin branch on this side to balance it. I've still got to complete the crown, but if we now take quite a radical decision, the back area is very, very congested. And I think I have to, as they say, bite the bullet and decide what to do with that back area. So, I think this one, if you come here and have a look against the white, I think I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take a little bit off in case I may put a little gin in there. Rewire this, and this is going to rewire this. I think I can do this. So I'm going to bring those branches around because I need something to act as a foil for the back. So I'm going to do something like that. Okay. I won't show you the detail why. A lot of people complain that I can't show enough. But if I produced a three hour video, you would soon get bored. I don't want to do that. I know what works and what doesn't work for me. So I'm going to just put a double coil and bend this this way and why that one. I don't need to show you the detail of that. Okay, then I'll show you the next stage of that is a branch which is as thick as my forefinger. But because I want to wire it, I'm going to split it. This is where the branch splitter is so useful. You need to know when to use it to help with the work. And then I wire it. Okay, I'll show you in a minute. When I wire it, I will bend it. So I'm now trying to create the back branch 
opposition the background so that I get the perspective I need. So I put a double piece of wire and I did split that branch. That branch is as thick as my forefinger, so it's quite hard to bend. But I know that it can bend. The only problem is that Bovarinensis is very brittle. And if you do hear it cracking, that will be curtains for me. to bring it back on itself or not. I don't want to extend it too much because it needs to be a very compact looking tree. Okay, we come and see it's going to be a very tight zigzag. You see like that and like that from the view, top view you can see how I really zigzagged it. going to take a view from the back to see. So it's this space that I want to fill, this space I'm wanting to fill. So if I raise these branches like that, I can achieve that effect. So I'm going to wire these in place and see what happens. Okay. So I've created the back branch there, you can see it. And now I've got to see if I can make this more useful and you can see from the top how the wiring is done i've zigzagged the tree very uh, intensely so that it shortens the long branch the branch was initially very long but by zigzagging it i've shortened it so now all needs this refining at the top. So every single twig and branch is going to be wired. So it will take another half hour to do that. That only took like five minutes to wire that. So that didn't take very long. So if we will continue again. Just reviewing the wiring that I've done. This is the sweeping branch that is coming down. And the detail of that is I've anchored it against one of the stubs and then come out on a double wire and coming down, sweeping down. So that is the effect of that one. And then the back branch, that comes out from the same point, but it goes back and then I've zigzagged that wire to shorten it. So this will form the pad. The apex was quite difficult because there were several leaders. And I've taken them all up to far form a crown. I have one more problem, which is the one at the back. I will resolve that in a minute. That's the overall shape. Still some more to do. Okay, I now have a problem. This is very dense here. This is a back branch and it's going too far to the back. So I thought of, instead of going forward, I'm gonna bring it back double like that. So I'm gonna wire it to bring it back like that. So that's quite a radical type of move. So I'm going to do that. works. All the planes are flying as you can hear. I'm sure all you viewers will know by now that we live very near London Gatwick Airport. And it's nice to know that people can still fly. I wish I could fly. I have so many visits which 
I have promised to make to foreign countries, but I cannot do it. I'm going to take this branch which is going forward backwards just to shorten the branch, just to shorten it. But because it's back, it doesn't really matter. If you stand there, don't move, I will show you the effect. Now this is the front viewing side of here. I want to look into there. See through the camera. Usually, the camera gives a very good idea as to whether you're going right or wrong. If it doesn't look right, I can always cut it off. So, I still have quite a lot of density. I've got to rationalize those branches. So, I'm going to do a little more wiring, and the tree is virtually done. I've got to wire the pads here. So, it won't be long. So, so far, I think we've done three hours on this tree. You must be wondering whether the height of the tree has changed. No, it's the height of the turntable on which I've changed. I've now put it on one of this low turntable, which is only like eight inches high, because I now have to work on the top of the uh, tree, which is the crown of the tree. So, I have to reach it from this height. It was earlier in this turntable. Mind you, these are all these old office chairs. These office chairs were used in the 60s and 70s, so they're over 40 years old. They don't make office chairs like this anymore. And I started off initially by putting it on this turntable. So I've had three changes of height so far. So when you work on uh, your trees, having all these different heights of turntable, people wonder why I have so many odd turntables lying around, you know? Every one is a slightly different height, slightly different shape. So there is always a reason behind this madness that I uh, employ. So I'm not exactly mad. It's just that I have my own way of doing things. So that's a little tip for you. So if you come now look from the crown, you can see all the wiring that I've done. Some more wiring to do. So we've wired all this. All these little bits have still to be wired. So I still reckon I've only done like three and a half hours work from scratch, from bringing it in the field. This time yesterday, it was still in a flower pot in the field. And when I've done all the wiring, I'm going to pot it in a mica pot. So you see the finished article, I dare say in four hours. It's not a race against time. It's just to show that many of these trees are not as difficult as it seems. If you can see the potential in the tree, then everything else is easy. So I will carry on doing a little more wiring and you will see the finished article pretty soon. So after three and a half hours work, this is where we've got to. And this is over just two half days working intermittently. And I'm now in fact ready to put it in its pot. It may not be the final pot, I'll just ask Josh to bring the mica pot. The depth of the soil is only like not even eight inches deep and this mica pot is like four inches deep so I think that pot would do quite well. Can you just move it forward a little bit so that yeah so that pot should be okay so we will proceed to tease the roots and see what happens. As I told you before, many of these trees are planted in our field in ordinary mud. But our mud is quite fertile. It's so dark and black, it's got a lot of organic material in it. And we did put some bits of grit in the soil, but apart from that, the soil is nothing special and it has grown in this flower pot. I would say for the last 10 years, but prior to that it was grown in the open ground for about 10 or 15 years. They started off life, I can show you, I did show you before, that this is a bovinensis, 
And I would say 20 years ago the tree was this size, and over 20 years become that size. 10 years in the open ground, and the next 10 years in a flower pot. So that's what you get from growing in the garden. But one of the disadvantages of growing in a flower pot is that the roots go round and round. I mentioned it before. So again, I'm having trouble finding radial roots. So you can't win. There's advantages and disadvantages. If you leave it in the ground too long, you can never get it up and the tree will get too big. And if you leave it in a flower pot, the roots go round and round. So what do you do? I think I may have been better putting it in a long pot or box. But the advantages of growing it in a ground pot is that restricts the roots and you get the much finer, smaller needles. So there are many trade-offs. Like in life, you know, you've got to sacrifice one thing to get the benefit of something else. So these are the trade-offs. Growing in a flower pot restricts the roots, but you will get these curly roots. But we can solve that problem. Let us see how bad the roots are. I mean bad in the sense that it's curling round and round. See, this is another case in point. If you come closely, you see this root is going round. If I left it indefinitely, it just strangle the tree. Got to pull that out. It's going deeper. See, there's another root going round and round. are so congested here. Oh, this root belongs here. This little bit of root I can cut off. Judging how much root to cut off, that also is an art. You can't go too crazy. You've got to use your judgment to decide how much root to take off. So I'm now looking for the roots from the aesthetic point of view, not from the horticultural point of view. I know that within this root ball, there's still the original roots. So as long as I don't cut too much of it, the tree should survive more than well. So this funny root is going there. Where is that going? You notice that when I tease the roots, I tease it this way, almost radially. I don't go doing that. I try and tease it out radially this way. So even teasing the roots, there's an art. Now this funny root is like the Loch Ness Monster is going up and down, down. And let's trace it. If I can trace where it ends, I will try and pull it out. Rearrange the root. If it can't be rearranged, then I will cut it off. I remember the old saying, I don't know who said it, could have been even Naka when he came to the UK in 1984-86. He said, if you have a problem, cut it off. And if you've cut it off and you still have a problem, then you really have a problem. See, I got that root off, so I can arrange this as a radial, you see? So I've managed to rescue that one, and it's young enough to still make it a radial. Now, these little ones are not radial. It's 
So that can be a nice radio. So a lot of people ask me on my video comments, can you do a lesson about Nebari? Well, the way I work, I don't do special lessons about this or that. As and when the situation arises, I will talk about it. So this repotting exercise is a very good opportunity to talk about this uh, Japanese term Nebari. It simply means surface roots. To get nice surface radial roots like a cartwheel coming out from the center, not going round and round the trunk. So that's what I'm trying to find from this tree. Make sure that the roots are going radially. If they're not going radially, I will deal with it. Branch cutter. That odd root coming out like a Loch Ness monster, I'm not too worried. In fact, it's still radio, so that's okay. That's also okay. In fact, by the time I've scraped the surface soil off, it will probably be just the right depth for the mica pot that I'm going to put it in. Where I can pull it out, I will pull it out, but if I can't pull it out, I will cut it off. The root ball is so compact, really compact. Okay, I'll leave it for now. And then maybe in a couple of years time, I may look at the roots again. See, the graft is so good on this tree. All Bovenenses are grafted trees because they not easy to produce some seed, so it's Bouvernance is grafted onto ordinary Scots pine. I may just leave those. Okay, we'll prepare the pot now. So I've teased the root that much. I'm going to put a tiny bit of sugar at the bottom, not a great deal. I don't know if it really helps. At least it gives me peace of mind. I just use it to cover the drainage holes more than anything else. And then I will. This is all concoction. I'm just putting some. The large grain of the dharma. Not very large. mound and then I'll put this tree in there to see what happens. Oi!
I'm going to leave it a bit proud for now. No, I don't know. No, I will tease a little bit from the bottom. Right, we've positioned the tree like that. And this is the soil that we've got it out of. This, as I said, was just the nursery soil, nursery mud, which I said is nice black rich soil. But it is probably going to be too, too soggy. It's almost clay-like. But for pine, we need it more open. But as I said, it's been growing for the last 10 years in that soil, so it's okay. But you see the type of soil I'm now mixing for this bonsai pot. I've used the, not medium, it's slightly larger than medium grain akadama. So that 50% akadama, and then there is a bit of organic matter and some smaller akadama, some black Japanese grit, and that's it. So that is the soil I'm putting in there. And I'm just going to put it in, it's like cooking. And then we will prod it in with sticks and things. I don't think you need to film all the So details. after four and a half hours work, and with the help of Josh, my cameraman and volunteer, he's done a lot of the fine wiring, and he's helped carry the tree around and do a lot of the heavy work. So let me critique this tree. First of all, let me show you what we pruned off. This is all we pruned off. As you can see, no cheating going on. This was growing from here, and this was going from here. So we got rid of those two. And then this was the back branch. This branch was going that way. And this was going that way. So got rid of those two. And this one was this one that we took off from there. So we took off two, four, five branches. That's all, five branches we cut off. And we put the tree at the slant, and I have deliberately wired this down because this was a long branch going up that way. We brought it right down. I've used the guy wire because I think too thick a wire may not look so elegant. So this is going to be used for one year, and I can bet you anything that this was set. And I've used this style of braiding the branches down, this coming down, so sweeping down. Beautiful line. The tree originally was growing that way, so we cut the leader off, side branch grew there, I cut another branch there. So a lot of cut and grow technique has been used in this tree. That I'm not sure whether to make a gin or not, but I'll leave it for there, uh, the time being. And we've managed to get quite a decent crown. So we also managed to get it into a mica pot. And this can be its uh, pot for the next 10 years, who knows? And so after four and a half hours work, and Josh working, let me just show Josh against it, have a photo op. So have you enjoyed working on this? Yeah. Hmm? What did you learn? Yeah. Wiring? Pairing branches. Pairing branches. Pairing branches. Okay. Did you expect it to turn out like this? No. I thought it would be a big up note. Okay, so what originally could have been just a wide spreading tree, we've now made it more like a proper bonsai than a garden tree. We tend to make a lot of our uh, movements into garden trees because there are a lot of my customers who like them as garden trees. But this is more elegant, so I'm pleased with it and I hope you have enjoyed this as well. So there you go. So we are going to have a whole spate of pine uh, videos because I've been spending a lot of time over the Christmas and New Year holiday working on our large pines. So there you go. Happy New Year.